We welcome our viewers here in the United States and uh, parts of the world. And uh, today in our program, we'll be talking about uh, leadership. The country called Zambia, we need leadership. Leadership in different forms. There's leadership at the government level, leadership on the provincial level, uh, district, constituency, branch level, ward level, everywhere. We need leadership. And uh, today I'll be talking to my colleague, uh, Mr. Edward Mwaba Ndalama. Uh, I am going to give him a chance to, ex to introduce himself and uh, after that, we are going to go straight into our discussion. Let me welcome my brother, uh, Edward Mwabandalama. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Piri, for hosting me. Indeed, uh, a great pleasure that uh, I could have a chance to, to talk to the people about leadership. Yeah, in a nutshell, Edward Mwabandalama grew up in, in, in Indola went to Kaele Primary School, and then Luguta Secondary School, and then the Northern Technical College and the Copper Period University where I did electrical engineering. Yeah, I did work a bit, but uh, I think my field is has too much to do with leadership. I love leadership. I love to work with people. Yeah, currently, um, I've represented the country of Zambia to different forums across Africa in leadership, youth leadership, youth empowerment, and how do we propel Africa to the next stage uh, in terms of leadership? Because we do believe that uh, leadership is about uh, uh, everything, and, uh, and everything in terms of development falls on leadership. Uh, yeah, in, in a nutshell, I host a lot of uh, positions. Uh, I'm the Netherlands Education Group of Zambia Ambassador. I represent um, the World Entrepreneurship International Forum, the Netherlands Education Group of Zambia Ambassador of Netherlands. Uh, international community, Arab uh, Africa uh, forums, also the NASA fellow where we try to work hand in Egypt in terms of leadership and now the world can come together using the, the tools of leadership. To, to I do believe leadership is everything because everything falls on leadership and this is why I'm so passionate about leadership. You know, I, I've been uh, a leader from the edge as far as I can remember from grade five, when uh, my teacher Bright appointed me to first report, and up to now I sit on different forums at international level, at Africa, at the global stage, uh, you know, where we discuss uh, leadership and, uh, you know, how we can change the 21st century, you know, and how to help humanity understand development of, of um, where we are right now and where we can be tomorrow. So, yeah, that's me in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm, I'm impressed with uh, what you are doing, and this is one of the reasons why I said you should come over to, to the broadcast, to our broadcast. Uh, what, what do you think our country needs at the moment? Because uh, I know that we, people were frustrated with PF. And um, most people left PF, others stood on independent uh, because there were just too many frustrations they went through. Uh, but some of us, we are still PF and uh, we still love PF, uh, even though we are not happy with everything that is going on. Um, what, what do you think as, as a PF we should do to help this country? Because... Uh, uh, many people voted, yes, they voted for change, but uh, the change they got is not what they expected. So this crisis, what can you say about this? What, what do you think we missed it? Or where do you think you can advise? Yeah, like, like I said, you know, the most important thing is uh, for every development to take place in a country, there must be unity. Okay. Yes. And the unity, yeah, it's, it's key. It starts with our personal our life, and then it goes to our communities, and then district level, provincial, and at, at a country, country or national wide level. 
So what we need is not just uh, politics, but we need uh, leadership in politics, not politicians pretending to be leaders. That's where I've seen the problem is. Because leaders... Can you explain people... more about that? Yeah, leadership what I mean is... Uh, politics and politicians parading themselves as leaders. Can you explain exactly. more about that? Yes, uh, leadership demands that uh, we do what is not uh, of first interest, but we put uh, the people's interest first. Leadership focuses on the people. Politicians, uh, mostly, they would want to say things to please people, to get elected in key positions, just for personal gain. But, you know, we need to go beyond that. Leadership is not a simple thing, and you, no one said that leaders should face simple things. And this is the reason why we need leaders in key positions of this country, leaders in politics, not politicians pretending to be leaders. Because politicians are people who want to tell you what you want to hear, just to be, to be elected in positions. A leader will be honest with you and tell you the honest truth. It's not about popularity, it's about the truth that should help each and every person. And this is what all leadership is all about. So when it comes to PF, like you said, I was in PF and I stood as an independent in Kabush constituents, in my constituents, and I've done politics for more than 20 years. No single corruption, no single corruption. While I was in PF, I spoke against uh, what was happening, against the land illegal allocations, against the uh, mediocre appointments, against the, you know, looking for friendship instead of looking for brilliant people that can prepare the organization going forward. But I think PF lost because, uh, you know, people started looking at friends who will not be in positions, and this is why we missed it. Yeah. Instead of looking for people that have been there with the people on the ground and people who would want to speak the truth for the benefit of the organization, not for personal benefits, and not people want just to be in positions, but people can think of progress to move the organization to the next level. And this is why I understand leadership is all about. And this is what I think PF made a mistake because it became so, you know, a, 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 you know, a part that hated the truth. Whoever speaks the truth or a view which is different from those in positions, he was called disloyal, which is, I believe, should not be like that. Leadership demands that we, you know, we, we know how to handle conflicts. We know how to, to, to prepare and come together and, you know, and dialogue. Leadership demands that we need to accept criticism because we can never be all right just because one is in a position. It should never be like that. So I think PF made a big mistake by listening to those that you really wanted them, you know, to praise them all the time instead of telling them the truth, what was on the ground. And this is what we missed it. And, uh, you know, UPND got carried the day because of that. Yeah, so when you, I heard you questioning uh, how far and what is happening in the country, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, UPND uh, government has been in office, I think, for over six years, six months, I mean. Um, yeah, so far, they, they, of course, they have, we can't say they have failed in everything. And, you know, when you are coming up with a new government, it's not as simple as it is, and how we look at it from outside. We are talking a party that has never been in government for a long, long, they have never been in government. So they coming with a new system. And I do believe that uh, they have scored in some things and, you know, but they need to pull up their tokens and you know, work hard to make sure to, to reach to, you know, to the promises that they gave up the people. But we can't judge them now because it's just six months. So let's see in the next one, two, two years and see, then we can say, and see where the direction is, uh, is, is going, yeah. That is what you are saying yeah. about this uh, government. And then about yeah. PF, you are saying that um, they should be looking for what people want, candidates that people want, not what somebody that is popular on the ground, uh, not necessarily popular on the PF structures. Is that what you are saying? Yes, 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 yes. Because one yeah. thing we should understand, like I I, I know what it means to be in a structure, and I know what it means to be opposed for speaking the truth. Because I grew up in PF. We started PF as the youngest youth chairman in Kabushu Wade when we, we started PF with Michael Sad. So I've grown up in those structures, and I understand in and how they work. 
But like I said, what every organization like PF needs is to give ownership to the people, not to grab power from the people. And then we just say the MCC are the owners of the knowledge and they can listen to what is on the ground. That's the biggest mistake. Because at MCC is just left about 0.2% of the total vote out, you know. So, so when you say given... MCC, when you say MCC, try to explain because uh, we have got uh, viewers uh, here in the United States who don't know what MCC means. Okay, MCC basically stands for, you know, members of Central Committee. Okay, these are this... people that the people in trust to run the affairs of the organization in this political party we are talking about pf so in other those words, are you not are, the owners of in other words you are saying that mcc is the highest uh, ruling body of patriotic front yeah uh, according to what uh, we are taught to believe, but for me, I don't look at that. The highest organization is the people themselves, the owners of the of the of the of the organization. So, what get, basically those MCC should be doing is not to make decisions on behalf of people; is to listen, because leadership is about listening to the people, listening to the views, and then put yourself in those uh, you know people that are giving you views and make decisions that will make them feel part of the organization. Because they can never be a part without uh, with the, the grassroots. So the bigger chunk uh, of the organizations, like in this case is PF, is the people on the ground, not the MCC. The MCCs can never exist without the party. The MCCs can never win an election. Just like the structure can never win an election. And in this case, this is why if every organization that is serious, you know, to, to increase the lifespan of that organization should have people in key positions that have got influence beyond the structure, influence with intellectuals, influence with the business community in an honest way. Okay. If we can do that, you know, people will say, oh, you know, because leadership now, it, it's, it's not about forcing. It's not about bulldozing. It's about inspiring people. It's about invitation. People need to see what we do, who are we, and then people get aggravated to us and join us. And like the way it was in PF where they say, if you've got a different view, they will chase you from the party to say, you no longer belong to, to, to PF. I, I never got you know, that. I, I never understand the logic behind that because you can't say someone who has got a different view is a non-entity. No, he's just a chairman. You lose one person, you lose one vote, and that person has got influence and you're still talking to others, and that's how you lose power. So a leader should be, you know, should be very, very, you know, uh, sensitive, even to one person. This is why leadership is not for jokers. It's even to one person. You need to listen. It's not imposing things on people. It's listening to the people and then talk less. Let them give ideas because you find that the solutions, actually, they're on the ground, not in the offices and top offices, never. You know, because if you follow structures and the bureaucracy, it kills innovation. Because it takes away the, the power from the people. And the power of people is more important than position power. And this is why every organization that understands how to run affairs of the people, they should always put, put people first and listen. Then make decisions on behalf of the people. Of course, the people themselves should feel part of that decision. You know, once you give them ownership, they will do whatever you can do. You tell, you show them to do that. You know, and I believe that's how things should be. Yeah, I think I agree with you. Uh, leadership should be about the people, not yeah. the top. Because, like you say, the top positions, um, we can call them MCCs or we can call them uh, whatever name. Uh, like in, in MMD, they used to be called NEC, National Executive Committee. This is the same thing as MCC members of central committee you see i think i agree with you on on so many points on so many fronts like leadership we have to listen to what the people want have you seen we have to listen to what the people want and uh, this is why pf lost elections last year in 2021 in august people uh, 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 
we lost elections because we did not listen to what people wanted. This is clear. You find people who say we want this person to represent us in parliament. But the MCC will say, no, we don't want this person. We are going to give you this person. Have you seen? So I 100% agree with you, Mr. Ndalama. You see? Thank you. Uh, yes, and I the, agree with the, you 100%. And the other thing, uh, you know, the other thing that was there, the MCC was never interested in, in not getting to know the brilliance of, it was about payment. How much do you pay them? If you don't have money to pay them or to bribe anyone in the structure, you stand no chance. So it found that the, the, the enemies of the party were the people that were in positions because they had the interest of their stomach, not the organization. You know, if you don't have any money, if you've never worked in anywhere, they would get money from those that were ministers. And I think this made even the minister to start stealing. You know, instead of working, they they start they made sure they you know they fat in their pockets to come and bribe, you know, the, those that will be picking them to stand as MPs and and whatever it is, which is all wrong. But you know, so PF was killed by the PF themselves, you know, because they stopped listening to people, they stopped listening to to what the, the country people are saying. You know, everyone was flashing money there and there. We know and you know and. The language was something else. You you don't insult people that you know put you in a position. You know, Zambians were complaining, but we couldn't listen to, to, to the complaints of the Zambians. And the Zambians are the bigger, uh, they are overall employers. They are the ones that employ politicians. They are, and they will fire you if you are not listening to them. So if you think you've got so much power, it's just a matter of time. Five years they wait for you and they will chuck you out. And this is what happened to PF. PF became arrogant. They could never listen. They, they thought when they have the money, they can buy everyone. You, money, there's a way of money at a certain stage where money can work. And there's a certain stage where money can't work. So if you think, you know, just because you're in a position, like the way it was happening, those that had no money, they stand no chance. They have no brains unless you are in a position and they thought they've got all the monopoly of the knowledge. And what happened? PF was kicked out. So, uh, if you were, if you had a chance to talk to the MCCs, or you had a chance to talk to the people on the ground, or you had a chance to advise the leaders, what would you tell them? My biggest advice, I'll tell them: uh, Can you leave those positions? You don't cling on to positions when you failed the people. You know, you need if you love an organization. No, love, let go. You don't hold on to positions. Sometimes on moral grounds, just resign and let others take take up that position. Because if really PF needs to brand, they need new people, new faces, not the same old people and you think you can brand. It doesn't work like that. You know? So if PF means serious about uh, the branding and they, <laughs> they mean serious of maybe probably by any chance to get back into power, they really need to bring in new people in positions. Those old faces, people don't, don't need them, no matter what they can say. Because they had a hostile, you know, um, ground feedback, and they couldn't listen to that. So you don't you don't brand by the same 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 people. You know, people are the same. How do you brand like that? So it's it's oh. not easy to brand <laughs> that's such personal level branding people and then change an organization as well. So it will be very difficult to brand with the same people. Trust me, they are killing a good organization that was there. And I think Zambia need a strong opposition party. But as things stand now, I, I, I can't believe that a big organization up to now, six months down the line, they don't have a president. It means there was no plan for secession, which is they can never be success without a successor. You know, a, an organization should not die with me because I started with it. It means I'm a failure. You know, it should live beyond my life. But so those people that have done their part, let others take up the challenge. It's, it's not just them that have got the knowledge, you know. It shouldn't work like that. Uh, yeah, this is a really hard gospel truth. And it's really, <laughs> it's really hard. I, 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 I actually, you know, I like to be honest 
not only with myself, but with the whole country. Um, what Mr. Ndalama is saying, there is some sense in it, even though it may be hard to swallow, but uh, there is some sense in it, you know. It is true that we need true rebranding. And uh, from what I'm hearing, uh, not only from Mr. Ndalama, because you know what, I'm talking to so many people. I'm talking to people in all the 10 provinces of Zambia. You understand? Yeah. I have taken it upon myself to find out what's going on on the ground. You see? Yeah. This is what I'm doing every day. When I wake up, I'm doing this every day. I'm not even going to work. <laughs> you understand me? Yeah, I can see the passion that you have. I'm not even going to work. All my business, everything, I've given it over to my children. My children are running everything. I'm doing this thing every day. When I wake up, I have to put something in my stomach and start talking. Good. That's, that's what I'm doing every day. You know? right. So this is how passionate I am. You know? I've been talking to so many people. And uh, what you are saying is really resonating because not only have I heard it from you, I have heard it from the people in Eastern Province. I have heard it from the people in the Western Province, in the Northern Province, in Ruapula. I have heard all that, you know. So, in short, I think that uh, we should go to the convention as PF. We should make sure that we select a leader. And uh, listen to what... Uh, Listen to what uh, I have heard from the ground, uh, what the MCCs and the other leaders are saying in PF. They are saying that there is no structure, so they can't hold a convention because there is no structure, and uh, they have to start uh, rebuilding structures. So they have started with the uh, Lusaka province. They, they have dissolved everybody who was elected on uh, Lusaka province. And then they have appointed people on, uh, on Lusaka province. And uh, I think as, as we are talking, they are on their way uh, to start appointing people in the Eastern province. And uh, they want to do all that across the whole country. Now, my question is, uh, who is appointing these people? And if these people are appointed, who are, who are they going to give loyalty to? Are they going to give loyalty to the people or they are going to give loyalty to the appointing authority? So when we go to the convention with the, so many people, that structures that have been just appointed by, we don't know who is appointing these people. Because... Uh, the way I know, we were supposed to have uh, elections to vote for MCCs, to vote for the uh, president of PF, to vote for the secretary general of PF, to vote for all these positions. We were supposed to have elections, but these people are saying we cannot have elections because we don't have structures. So we have to establish structures first so that we can go to the convention with established structures and those structures are going to vote for the president. That's what they are saying, but uh, I do not agree with that assessment. You see, I personally do not agree with that assessment and I know that my opinion may not matter, but it may be the truth. Because, Mr. Ndalama, looks, listen to this. Uh, PF was in uh, opposition for 10 years. We had structures. And PF was in government for 10 years. We had structures. So, PF had had structures for 20 years. How can all these structures just disappear in six months? that people will now be telling us that uh, 
PF has got no structure, so we can't go to the convention. This means that uh, even when we were going for elections, we had no structures. How can 20-year-old structures just disappear in six months of losing elections? This means that we never had structures in the first place. And then it's a problem for me, Mr. Ndalama, because how am I going to trust people who were those structures dissolved, disintegrated in their hands? How is it possible for me to trust them that they are going to go and establish new structures? This is why I'm agreeing with you when you say we need new people. But I think that we... Can, we can combine them together. We can have the, some old people with experience, and then we can have some new people with uh, fresh blood, so that we can now really, we can truly rebrand. That's what I think. Yeah, you, you, you're right. And uh, like I said, you know, we, we can't say all the MCs were wrong people, but I think we can use the principle of 28%. If the ATA can live uh, on maybe probably the 20% women, then we'll have some hope. Like I said, it's, 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 it's just selfishness. You know, it's, it's, they are trying to protect their personal positions, not the position of the organization. And it's been just like that all this time, when they were pretending that they've got a strong, strong structure on the, on the ground. It wasn't there. Some of us told them the, the truth, and we were told that you are insulting leaders. But because we told them the truth, that was what was happening on the ground. You know, the structure started dying a long time ago. You can imagine only the cover period in 2016 elections. On 32.3% voter turnout on the copper belt. And we got, among that, of the total voter registered, registered voters, 32.3 came out to vote. Where were the rest? Why didn't the rest vote? There was a problem. But like yeah. you said, you know, bosses live in fool's paradise. They don't want to listen to the truth, you know, because the truth doesn't reach them. Because they are living in this paradise, everything is, is remote control. They get what they want. They will get the businesses themselves, amongst themselves, you know. So they thought they would be there for, for, for all this long time. But yeah, I don't know. I think <laughs> I, I, I think I agree with you because, you see... Um, we really need to rebrand if we, have, we stand any chance of uh, um, winning any election in the near future. So, so I think that, uh, Mr. Ndalama, we should continue this uh, discussion next week uh, because I know that we, we haven't finished. We have got uh, so many things to dig if we are going to really truly the brand we have got so many things to dig out you know uh, because i know i know that even in the bible you know uh so this time finished and he did everything he could to remain the leader of the children of israel but he, it wasn't like that you know and it's amazing to me that the son of Saul, who is called uh, jonathan <laughs> uh, had discernment. He, he knew very well that uh, the time for my father has ended. So let me join the successor. So Jonathan joined David, you see. And uh, it helped Jonathan because uh, even when he died, uh, his children, he had one of the child who is called uh, Mephibosheth. You know, in the Bible, it's there. You know, Mephibosheth, because of Jonathan's uh, work with David, Mephibosheth was kept in the palace by David, you know. So we have got so much to talk about and we'll continue this discussion next week. You know, and I'm going to ask you to remain tuned so that you can uh, follow us on uh, this program. And if you haven't subscribed, you really have to. Because we are going to continue next week, you know. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, Mr. Andalama, please uh, 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 give your closing remarks uh, on uh, this program. 
Yeah, my uh, one thing I would want to say is thank you so much uh, for hosting me and thank you so much for the guys behind that are doing the Tekenko. I think they are doing a great job and uh, this is what we need. We need to be honest and uh, talk more. Like I said, uh, leadership is not a simple thing. It's for not for faint-hearted people. Leadership demands that uh, we need be honest, speak the truth, whether it hurts us, you know, because only strong people are able to, you know, to confront the truth. Like on PF uh, grounds, they need the guys need to go, you know, and have introspection themselves. Then to be honest with what they're doing. As long as there's no honest, this party is dying each and every day. It is dying each and every day, and it's like they can't see because they are still dreaming. They are still in denial. It's high time they come to the realization that they are no longer in power. And once you accept your weakness, it's the starting point of your strength. It's not your weakness, you know. So I would encourage uh, the guys in, in PF. They really want to you know, to mount a, a strong political front opposition. They need to be honest. Sometimes they need to go and just, you know, do an introspection. Then they come back strong. Uh, that way, it's, it's going to help them. But the truth always will be very hard, and the truth hurts. But the mistakes uh, in the patriot front are within the party uh, uh, structures. And those people, I think, they should not go around appointing people again. That was a mistake that was made. Let people on the ground decide who should be their, their leader. That's how it works. Simple as all that. I think that's what leadership is all about. Thank you so much, Api. Thank you so much, Mr. Ndalama, and I'll be expecting you next week. I think I agree with you when we say that um, people should be the ones to appoint the leaders, not the leaders appointing the people to lead. No, 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 no. Even here in America, they call it primary elections, you see? where exactly. the Democrats themselves or the Republicans themselves will go and vote for the person they want to represent them, you see? So I don't know why we shouldn't be doing that also in Africa. I think that we, should, we need a center for democratic progress. We need to open up some kind of NGOs, which is going to be yeah. really talking about the progress of democracy, you know? So thank you so much, Mr. Ndalama, and I'll see you next week. Uh, thank you to our viewers uh, here and uh, abroad, and uh, we'll continue our discussion next week, and uh, thank you so much. God bless everybody. Bless you. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm your host, Wapiri. I love everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.